then what do you have to tell people for? If if they're just nutters, well, leave them. They're not a problem, are they? Who's going to believe nutters? Not many. The problem for them is that what we're saying does have validity. And people perceiving world events are increasingly realizing that it makes more sense to see that these events are manipulated into place rather than they're acting or happening by random accident. And so this problem is being met with more and more attempts to dismiss and discredit people who are actually uncovering what's really happening as opposed to the movie script that we're told by the mainstream media. We've had in very recent times the British Prime Minister, David Cameron, feeling it necessary for some reason to say publicly that the conspiracy, because that's what it is, to uh, manipulate the result of the EU referendum in and out public referendum is not a David Icke style conspiracy. Why would he feel the need to say that? And we're having uh, academia more and more uh, coming in, saying that uh, people that believe in conspiracy theories have some kind of psychological problem. And if that's true, what is the problem for authority that makes it feel the need to try more and more, and we've seen nothing yet, to discredit those who are uncovering what those in authority don't want the public to know? This is uh, David Cameron. He uh, took a break in 2014 from selling uh, snake oil to speak at the UN General Assembly and he was talking about conspiracies when it was about defeating the ideology of extremism. The peddling of lies about a 9-11 plot or that the 7-7 London attacks were staged and the idea that Muslims are persecuted all over the world as a deliberate act of Western policy are conspiracy theories. The fact that Muslims are being persecuted all over the world as a deliberate act of Western policy is a conspiracy theory. Uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Syria. It's not happening, it's just a theory. And talking about the conspiracy theory of a, a concept of an inevitable clash of civilizations. It's happening. And even though they're all true, ah, because they're all true, they have to be discredited with this term conspiracy theorist or conspiracy theory, which actually came into more widespread use as a result of a deliberate policy of using that term by the CIA to discredit those uncovering the uh, real background to the Kennedy assassination and other assassinations in the 60s like that of Martin Luther King. We must be clear, snake oil man went on, to defeat the ideology of extremism we need to deal with all forms of extremism not just violent extremism. Now I'm going to pass that, not just violent extremism, through our Orwellian translation unit and it comes out as we must silence those telling the truth about what we're really doing. He goes on, for governments, there are some obvious ways we can do this. We must ban preachers of hate from coming to our countries. We must prescribe organizations that incite terrorism against people at home and abroad. Now that's the front. A lot of people now, genuine peaceful protesters and activists are asking why they are being prosecuted or blocked by laws that were 
brought in on the pretext of fighting terrorism? Because the answer is that that's exactly what it was, a pretext. You look at these anti-terrorism laws and they're so widely um, applicable in the way they're written on purpose that they can be applied against anybody. That's the idea, just to get them in. So um, when he, uh, Cameron's talking here about um, extremism and terrorism, what he's really talking about is in the wider context as we move through uh, targeting those who are uncovering the truth or protesting about government policy. Um, he says we must stop the so-called non-violent extremists. Non-violent extremists are people who are exposing through words and peaceful uh, ways what the government is and uh, the authorities in general are really doing. We must stop the so-called non-violent extremists from inciting hatred and intolerance in our schools, our universities, and yes, even our prisons. Intolerance. Um, intolerance for governments lying to us is what he's talking about. Of course, he says, there will be those who will argue that this is not compatible with free speech and intellectual inquiry. He should have added, but then that's the idea. So we shouldn't stand by and just allow any form of non-violent extremism exposing the government peacefully. But the right-wing extremists in government, they're not a problem. And the racists in government, they're not a problem. And he says, to combat this, we must support the building blocks of free and open societies. So when's he going to start in Britain then? This is a man who is so blatantly manipulating and engineering through lies and suppression of the alternative to the lies, the European referendum, talking about a free and open society. And then, after 9-11, when, you know, all that mayhem's taking place, George Bush, boy George Bush, said again in an address to the United Nations, November the 10th, 2001, um, he denounced the emergence of, quote, outrageous conspiracy theories that attempt to shift the blame away from the terrorists themselves, away from the guilty. Again, all that mayhem, and he has to go out and make a specific point about conspiracy theories, giving another version of really what happened on 9-11. Why? Because the official story of 9-11 is so full of holes. It's a joke. And it's not about shifting blame away from the terrorists. It's shifting the blame away from the patsies and those blame for it to hide the fact that the real terrorists, those in the shadows that were ultimately controlling Boy Bush, were the real people responsible for 9-11. Then we have the Obama administration. Um, top azar, uh, Obama czar infiltrate all conspiracy theorists. We're nutters, right? What's the problem? We're not. That's the problem. Story goes, in a lengthy academic paper, President Obama's regulatory czar, Cass Sunstein, argued the US government should ban, ban conspiracy theorizing. Among the beliefs Sunstein would ban is advocating that the theory of global warming is a deliberate fraud, which it is. Now, if the basis of the global warming claims is so powerful and so obvious and so overwhelming. What is the problem of nutters challenging that official story? What 
problem could something that is so blatantly true, so they claim, have with a few people saying it's not? To the point where the US government should ban conspiracy theorizing. Why? Because, just like 9-11, the official story of global warming and what became climate change when the temperature stopped rising is as full of holes and as nonsensical and as unsustainable as what happened on September the 11th, 2001, according to the official story. Um, Sunstein also recommended the government um, send agents to infiltrate extremists who supply conspiracy theories to disrupt the efforts of the extremists to propagate their theories. Note, what we're seeing, just mentioned it, but the confirmation goes on and on now. They're, they're trying to associate people who expose conspiracies behind world events. In fact, if people read my books at length, it's actually one gigantic conspiracy with many faces. Um, they are equating or trying to in the public mind extremism, extremists, fear, with people people called um, conspiracy they'll poke yourself in the eye. People called conspiracy theorists who are exposing um, the government. In a 2008 Harvard Law paper, Conspiracy Theories, how appropriate, Sunstein and a, a co-author who was a Harvard Law professor, ooh, he must be clever, ask, what can government do about conspiracy theories? I've got a question. Why do they feel there's anything to do about them if they're so nonsensical and obviously so? Uh, quote, um, we can readily imagine a series of possible responses. One, government might ban conspiracy theorizing. Two, I mean, you know, pinch me. Ouch, it's true. He actually said this. Um, Governments uh, might impose some kind of tax, financial or otherwise, on those who disseminate such theories. In a 30-page paper, Sunstein argues the best government response to conspiracy theories is cognitive infiltration of extremist groups. Why? They're nutters, aren't they? As I keep asking. Then... We've got the academic side, you know, God save us from academia, please. I'll be a good boy, just, 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 God save us from academia. This is a story this week. Um, believe in conspiracy theories? You're probably a narcissist. People who doubt, in effect what they're saying, official um, uh, versions of events, are likely to be selfish and attention seeking. Whoa. It goes on. Um, through a number of online studies, not many it turns out, researchers at the University of Kent have showed strong links between uh, the belief in conspiracy theories and those with narcissism and low self-esteem. Who says they found it? They did. In the internet age, conspiracy theories can incubate in quiet corners of the web. Ooh but it may be psychological predispositions of believers which keep them alive rather than cold, hard facts. See, what um, they do with so-called conspiracy theories and conspiracy research is they um, give the impression all the time that it's just a theory. You know, they're just sitting in a darkened room and coming to these conclusions. Um, this is just one of my books. Um, thin, isn't it? The, the, the background information, the background supporting evidence for the fact that there is a global conspiracy to turn this into a global uh, um, prison state, unfolding by the day, by the way, just watch the news and, and your own life experience, that somehow there is no evidence when it's enormous. But they don't go there because you go there, they're on a loser. Let's have an open debate about this. No, they don't. I, um, I was on a television program once with um, an academic from um, 
University of London, I think it was. And um, this is a guy who, for any anything alternative whatsoever, is akin to him to garlic to a vampire. He comes from the uh, the Richard Dawkins school of the concrete mind, and he's having a go at what I'm saying and what have you um, as the cameras are rolling. And I said to him, "Have you ever read any of my books?" And he said, "No." So how do you know what I'm saying, especially in detail? I've read it in the papers. This is an academic that we're supposed to be taking seriously in terms of some kind of knowledge of what they're talking about. Anyway, this story goes on about the University of Kent. Over the course of three online-based studies, researchers at the University of Kent showed strong links between the belief in conspiracy theories and negative psychological traits. Um, writing in the journal Social, uh, Psychological per and Personality Science, the team explained, previous research linked the endorsement of conspiracy theories to low self-esteem. Now, one of the things that's building up here um, and, and you'll see build up more and more, is not just a connection between those that can see conspiracies um, to manipulate world events uh, and terrorism, the terrorists, but also the link between people that believe the government's lying and people with psychological problems. And this is this link's going to be made more and more um, strongly um, as we move along. And if people think that's far fetched, well, look what happened in the Soviet Union. How many dissidents against the Soviet Union tyranny, exposing the tyranny, ended up in mental hospitals to keep them quiet because they were uh, challenging the uh, the official version of the Soviet state, thus they had to be crazy, they had to be mad, by definition. Um, the results of these surveys, um, uh, where they asked people uh, to, if they agreed with specific statements as to whether governments, for instance, carried out acts of terrorism on their own soil, yes. Um, the results show that those people who rated highly on the narcissist uh, scale and who had low self-esteem were more likely to be conspiracy believers. Who says? They do. Lead author of the study, a lecturer in social um, psychology at Kent, ooh, again, must be clever, told SciPost.org, because conspiracy theories often refer to malevolent actions of groups, we wanted to distinguish whether it is a narcissistic image of the self or the group that predicts the endorsement of conspiracy theories. Note, it's never, is it the truth that predicts or accepts the in, and endorses conspiracy uh, claims in terms of explaining world events. The link they miss is the link between those who believe in conspiracies and those who believe, because they're intelligent, that governments and those in authority lie. And in terms of evidence, we only have the entire span of known human history to support that obvious fact. And then we've had people mention it in a video cast recently. We've had some academic who reckons he can prove that conspiracy theories are not true through maths. Note, truth is never part of their equation. Um, you know, We are led to believe and we are pressured and encouraged to believe that we must look to academia to tell us what we need to know about the world because they're clever and they've, they're at university and they've got letters after their name, mate. My experience and 
if people looked into this subject more deeply, I'm sure it would be the experience of so many others, is that far from being the bastion of knowledge, most, and I mean most, academia is the pollution of intelligence because its range of thinking, its range of the possible is akin to the size of a pea and I'm being optimistic. People say um, we must be sceptical. No, we mustn't. We must question. You see, there's such a difference between a sceptic and one who questions. Because one who questions, and people should question everything, including what I say, and see if it stands up. But one who questions is questioning in pursuit of the truth. A sceptic, like those very sad people in the sceptic societies around the world, their foundation from the start is that anything outside their pea-sized norm is not true. So their scepticism is not questioning if something's true, it's setting out from the start to try to convince people that it's not. And that, that is the mentality that infests and infects so much of what we call um, academia. And so we have this consensus between academics and politicians and journalists that somehow any any idea that there is a conspiracy must be nutty, must be dismissed by reflex action and, oh, let's cut and paste that, uh, what's that phrase again? Conspiracy theorist, that's it. He's a nutter, he's a conspiracy theorist. That's how it works. And so you have journalists who are so, again, infected by the arrogance of ignorance that they ridicule and dismiss those who are actually doing the job that they should be doing, but don't, as song sheet singers for the system. So let's just look for a second at the official definition of a conspiracy. A secret plan made by two or more people to do something that is harmful or illegal. Now, on that basis, how many conspiracies are there going on at all levels of society every day? The act of secretly planning to do something that is harmful or illegal. Weapons of mass destruction in Iraq that weren't. Classic. Now a conspiracy theory is officially defined as this. A theory that explains an event as being the result of a plot by a covert group or organization, a belief that a particular unexplained event was caused by such a group. So people don't conspire in secret to bring about the end that they all desire. That doesn't happen. Apparently not. Two, definition of conspiracy theory, the idea that many important political events or economic and social trends are the products of secret plots that are largely unknown to the general public. How much does the general public know about what's going on in authority and government and the banking system and the corporations? How much do they know? I mean, it's almost, it's almost in mathematical terms, um, almost indescribable it's so small, the amount that the public know about what's really going on compared with what's going on in, in the shadows and the meetings. But no, it's all a myth. And 
So what we're being asked to believe, in effect, is that governments tell the truth and thus there can be no conspiracies by governments to manipulate events by telling lies to bring about an end they want. And what I love, you know, people talk about conspiracy theories, and these academics and journalists and politicians talk about conspiracy theorists. Do you, do you know, for me, the, the, the strangest people of all are the coincidence theorists. They're the ones, academics, journalists, politicians, great numbers still uh, members of the public, who think that all these connections, all these... Um, names that keep coming up, all these organizations that keep coming up across a great swathe of different areas, all this information uh, showing the connections between apparently unconnected people, organizations and events is all a coincidence. I mean, I think that's a, a, a psychological flaw, you know. I think it's a, I think it's a case of terminal naivety. Maybe the University of Kent should do a study. It'd be interesting. So here we are in a situation where, for instance, war criminals like Tony Blair and Boy George Bush and uh, all the people around them and behind them, the, where the real power is, told us there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, knowing there weren't. They lied through sexed up dossiers. They lied in public statements about the threat of Saddam Hussein because they wanted to invade Iraq because it was on the list of countries to be invaded, which included Libya, Syria, uh, etc. So it comes out, obviously, some of us conspiracy theorists said it before it came out, weapons of mass destruction is a joke. It comes out there weren't any. So there was, under any definition of conspiracy, there was a conspiracy to delude the public into supporting or not opposing the invasion of Iraq on grounds that were known by those that were selling them to be absolutely spurious. But then you say, or you hear, that any idea that there was a conspiracy over 9-11 is a conspiracy theory and it, they're all mad. It's sobering to ponder on the following. Not just the same agencies, but the very same people who told us there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq when they knew they weren't, were the very same people that gave us the official story of 9-11. And what does it say about alleged journalists worldwide that despite what has been justified in horror and war, slaughter and suffering on the basis of the official 9-11 story being true, despite all that, Despite the same people telling us that story, telling us there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq when they weren't. I have come across yet no credible mainstream media investigation into whether that official story of 9-11 is true. Do you know, I, I kind of something to encapsulate mainstream journalists and politicians and what have you. I listened to an interview this week with uh, an investment banker. It was an investment banker who um, 
operated at, at a high level in the financial system. And it just shows you how the truth is kept from people, even in the system. That he was an investment banker working in global finance for a long time before he actually realized and grasped how money is created. The fact that money is created out of nothing, out of fresh air on computer screens by private banks, which gives them control of the entire financial system. And as those banks ultimately are controlled by the same network, it gives that network control over the whole financial system. If you go to my website um, on the home page, there's a, a, a video explanation of how money is created and the whole financial scam. Anyway, eventually, after years in the business at a high level, he realizes, hey, how money is created. He realizes the whole financial system is a scam. He then, with others, puts an event together where he's going to explain the whole financial scam and how money is created out of nothing by private banks. He sends invitations to 1,200 journalists and 179 politicians just to come and see the presentation. Not one single one of any of them replied and certainly did not turn up. And these are the people who are ridiculing in their arrogance of ignorance people who can see what they choose not to see. And so what we are seeing and will see more of are attempts to discredit conspiracy uh, researchers. We're now having Google, YouTube owned by Google, Facebook, even Twitter's coming into it now um, in terms of censoring information or um, un try trying to undermine the alternative media in many and various ways. We're having um, this right to be forgotten law extended, announced this very week, where um, people can be taken out of Google search engines in effect uh, because they've just asked to be taken out because they don't like what someone said about them. And what this is, this right to be forgotten, is simply a stepping stone towards George Orwell's memory hole, where information that the authorities don't want people to see just disappears. Um, Google, to extend uh, right to be forgotten uh, to all its domains uh, uh, accessed in the EU, it's EU law, Google will begin blocking search results across all its domains when a search takes place within Europe in an extension of how it implements the right to be forgotten ruling. The ruling allows EU residents to request the removal of search results that they feel link to outdated and irrelevant information, information they don't want people to see, um, about themselves on a country by country uh, uh, basis. And this is just the start. They'll want to extend this worldwide. You watch. And now, again, continuing this theme of linking, questioning the official story to terrorism, um, we have a, a, a situation where um, young people who question government or media may be extremists, officials tell parents, because you've got to get to the kids because they're the adults of tomorrow. You don't want them awake. Oh, my goodness, nightmare. Child protection officials uh, uh, have been uh, uh, criticised after warning parents that young people who take issue, I mean, wait for this, um, who take issue with government policy or question what they're told in the media may have been radicalised by extremists. A leaflet drawn up by the Inner City Child Safeguarding Board, I mean, how Orwellian is that? warns that, uh, by the way, to this Child Safeguarding Board have a branch in Westminster? If it doesn't, well, what's it doing? So the board warns that 
Appearing angry about government policies, especially foreign policies, is a sign specific to radicalization. So if you're angry about a government owned by the bankers imposing suffering, austerity and poverty on a vast number of people, you are becoming radicalized as an extremist. You see the constant connection in all these different areas. The same theme is being underlined all the time. Parents and carers have been advised by the Safeguarding Children Board in the London Borough of Camden that showing a mistrust of mainstream media reports and a belief in conspiracy theories could be a sign that children are being groomed by, ex uh, by uh, extremists. The leaflet says children who show a combination of these and other signs um, may be en route to emulating those who have been persuaded to leave the country in secret and against the wishes of their family, putting themselves in extreme danger as a result. You see how they're connecting, questioning all areas of the official story with extremists, especially extremists heading off to Syria. This is the, the psychological uh, mind game that's going on to get people to put the two together um, in their minds. Um, local safeguarding children boards are mandated by government all around the country under the Children's Act of uh, 2004. And we're going to see more and more of this because they, they want to shut down all questioning of anything outside the official norm. And that, as I've said in a recent video cast, is what political correctness is all about. The idiots that 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 extremists in uh, political correctness who who seek to impose those um, uh, those destroying um, uh, pressures on freedom of speech that make people frightened to speak their mind and speak their truth. They are just agents of government, but they have no idea that that's what they are because they're idiots. Bella Sankey, policy director of the campaign group um, Liberty, criticised the leaflet. Children should be encouraged to take an interest in politics and think critically about what they see in the media, uh, not deemed suspect for doing so. But that is the idea, to make that the case. And so we have had um, kids at school um, reported to the authorities and the police for doing things like going to the UKIP website, which is an official political party fighting elections in this country, actually opposing the EU. Uh, what was this other one? An A-level student was reported to the police by his headmaster, to the police, for criticising the school in a blog. Uh, the um, student... Um, was apparently, according to the headmaster, developing into an anarchist. I wonder if I should report the headmaster for um, developing into an idiot. See, what we, what we have here is a very simple situation. Not every last fact, not every last claim that conspiracy, conspiracy researchers say um, about the world is 100% accurate. And there are those who, who um, say things that I shake my head about because there's nothing to support it. But the fact is, the great body of conspiracy research which is cross-referencing information and cross-referencing conclusions, is explaining why the world is, is as it is, why the few control the world, why we've reached a point now where 1% of the population owns uh, 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 around 50% of the wealth of the world, why this is not an accident, why this is not random, it's designed, it's a conspiracy to bring this about. Just as there's a conspiracy, the same conspiracy, different face, to bring about a police state so the 1% can impose their will on the rest of the population. 
And when you are selling lies to try to uh, persuade the public that events are random when they're all going in a particular direction, you don't want them to see that. You want them to see dots, not pictures. When your whole foundation of what you want to achieve is based on lies, then of course what you have to do is suppress sources telling the truth about what you're doing and exposing what you're doing. And that's what we're seeing now. And that's why this whole thing with conspiracy theorists is, um, is um, increasing all the time. And we're also seeing that more and more people are looking at these explanations and going, well, you know, they make more sense of the world than, than what, the, what the authorities have done in us. And this is why audiences for mainstream media um, organizations are falling, many like a stone. And the audience for the alternative media is increasing, increasing, increasing. As long as people are getting crazier and crazier and crazier, it's, it's because they're awakening to, to what's really going on more and more. And you'll see um, these um, attacks on the alternative media, people like me and, and, and many others around the world, the alternative media in general, you'll see them increasing. See, in terms of my case, they have tried for years and years and years to dismiss me and um, discredit me through ridicule. That oh, it's mad. Um, but it hasn't worked. It's worked with people that, that will believe anything and don't read what someone's saying so they can see with their own mind. But with intelligent people, more and more and more, truly intelligent people, not academically intelligent people, as they claim, which is not really intelligence, most of it. It's cleverness, which is very different. Uh, remembering facts is cleverness. Intelligence is making sense of those facts. Um, and actually seeing that many of the facts aren't facts at all. So they're trying to ridicule me, but more and more people are... Um, looking at, at, at what I'm doing anyway. I'm just about to start a world tour. I'm going to talk to thousands, thousands, thousands of people all over the world, literally all over the world. So the ridicule's not worked. So what you'll see, and it will be the case in the, with the alternative media in general, is it will turn to hostility and to um, antagonism and condemnation and all that stuff. And um, what's happening now is summed up in this quote by Gandhi. First they ignore you, been there. Then they laugh at you, been there. Then they fight you, coming. Then you win, coming.